really, maybe, yeah. Well, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Danny Logan, and it is a uh, it is a pleasure and an honor. Uh, I will be your moderator uh, for uh, for uh, our very own Freema, aka Martha Jones. Before we get that going, um, I just want to, like, right now, just to sort of, you know, I, I want to see how many people brought Sonic Screwdrivers. <laughs> if you can do it, just bring them up right now. Hold them up right now. Hold them up. Keep going. Let them go. Let them go. <laughs> that is awesome. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> With all those Sonic Screwdrivers, we just destroyed a planet. <laughs> Well, I think it's about time. Are you guys, uh, first of all, uh, are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah! So, on the count of three, I'll introduce our very own Freema Adjaman, and you guys are going to go crazy. Is that cool? Yeah! Right. So here we go. This is like my personal count. So, all right. One, two, three. All right, folks. Welcome our very own Freema Adjaman! Doctor Who would I like to audition for a regular in Torchwood? So um, 
I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, and that they, sent, they said they didn't have any script available for it, so they gave me episode one, season one, called Rose. So that was the script I had to audition for. Yeah, nothing, that. but nothing to it. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I had to do these scenes. Um, and then I had a second audition with the casting director. And then my agent got a call saying, um, actually, it's been to, to audition for the new companion the whole time. We couldn't say anything because everything surrounding that show is so top secret. Really? It's unbelievable. Um, so they couldn't even tell you that you were auditioning for it. So they had to in the end though, because they said tomorrow you have your screen test with David in Cardiff and you're going up on the train with the casting director and it was Valentine's Day that day. So How I mean, sitting across from this casting director who you know you've only just met and having a meal in the evening with all these couples sitting looking at each other with doughy eyes and we're just sitting there going, Oh, it's so surreal and so strange. And then um, got to the hotel, I auditioned with David in, where, where were we? We were actually at the producer's house, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I was in the hotel room, I'm a bit, it's fuzzy. But um, I was so nervous, like, probably surprised I even knew. <laughs> I was like, and I was nervous, and then I wasn't, until, the, you know, the thought of what, how big the show is, and the association, and all of that. The no I'm glad they didn't tell me it was for Doctor Who any sooner than that. Because actually, you can never think things. Absolutely. And um, so I was nervous up until, up until the point I just got in there with him, and he was so easy, so easy to work with. Oh, that's so cool. He was so relaxed. He was like, just let's just enjoy it. Let's just play and try it this way and try it that way. And it, and the rest is history. And the rest is history. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for telling that. That's awesome. So If you could, um, if you could describe um, uh, Act Four, since the rest is history, uh, that's what we're uh, talking about. Uh, what was like one of your like favorite moments, like on set? Did you ever have like a just a crazy memory? Yeah, there were a few actually, because it was, I mean, just, 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 it's such a huge enterprise. Oh yeah. Show. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a big. Deal. I watched David Terry do the Proclaimers video with all the Doctor Who cast. That was amazing. Yeah, that was really awesome. So you probably you'd, you'd have one of those moments every other week. Really, you'd be like, Oh my God, I'm standing at the top. Or, oh my God, I'm you know there's a Dalek rolling past me, and wishing me good morning. Do you know like they want to like good morning? No, you talk to the guys in between the little grills and the whole. Guys, we're in there for hours, day in, day out, just talking about their weekend, you know, <laughs> rolling around the room. So, um, it was, there was so many, many surreal moments. I suppose I really, um, I really liked my first, very first day. They actually, um, broke me in quite, quite gently. <laughs> they, um, Go uh, on. I was, I had a, a very easy first day, no dialogue. Um, it was just to be present and kind of get to know the crew, and it was the, the it was the Smith and Jones episode where the slabs are chasing us, and, oh, so, right. and there was some the bit where we were walking following um, Brian, uh, the Mr. Stoker. Yep. All the, the the sort of connecting parts of that episode we shot all in one day, just so I would just be there meeting people. And, so I remember that because everyone was just so nice and so welcoming and so friendly, and I just felt it was going to be a, a fun experience. And then I really liked um, the day when all of the companions, and everyone was together on the on the TARDIS. Oh, was that, shot. that was yeah. perfect. That, that was, was perfect. such a nice. Because we've never we've never all been in the same place at the same time, despite the crossovers. So it's just nice to get to know other people in the Who family. Because you, all right, you right. Kind of like, well, we, we all family. watch, and we're like, yeah, they should be, they should all be friends. They should all be friends. <laughs> you, you know, you don't, you don't, you hardly see each other. Yeah, you save the universe, and then yeah. you're like, they should be friends. <laughs> it was nice to hang out for that day. Yeah. Excellent. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and then before we open up to you, um, before we open up to questions, and remember, you guys can line up here if you want to ask Freema uh, any questions. Um, after, uh, after Doctor Who, um, what was life like? Like, what was, you know, what was life like after Doctor Who? Well, it was funny, because when I started, um, actually, we had all these big meetings. You had meetings with, uh, um, media people and, uh, the producers. They were all gearing you up for how different your life was going to be. 
watch your part of this show and the minute it comes out everything's going to change and you know you're sort of a little bit like oh okay and it wasn't like that no. actually no it wasn't uh, it it kind of was like a steady drip feed if you like so i would be able to, i would go out to my local shops after episode one and maybe no one would rec would have recognized me and then after episode two went out couple of people might have been like, and then three, four, by the time the season had gone out, you, you, you notice it's a very steady, progressive, it's not like um, a, a big negative kind of yeah. association with, oh my god, you can't, everything's going to be different in a way that they kind of made it, they didn't mean to make it to scare them, but they were just saying, you, you know, it's such a, it's a big thing, it's a big show, and, but you know, I, I, I kind of feel like, because I was older, I was, 26 when I got that. Oh wow. I think I'd already set my life in a certain motion and I was doing the things I always like to do and I think if you get opportunities like that very very young your life can change because you 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 can get you know you can be around people that might take you off in different directions you get these opportunities to go places meet people do things not always positive you just get like, the whole world of showbiz absolutely you know your life can change but it's kind of in your control right as well. absolutely. so 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 i felt like i was always in control the whole time and afterwards i've had really great opportunities with work i'm so grateful for that i think doing a show like doctor who really it kind of um, gets you the exposure. Gets you the exposure, and the industry really mm -hmm. takes the shows seriously, and they Excellent. maybe see you for things they might not have considered you for before. Right. I mean, the, the roles I was doing before were had a very, very much had a, t um, a type to them. Mm -hmm. um, but to be, you know, in mainstream television as lead yeah. female in female, female positions you know, came after. A versatile role because if you can have a whole conversation with an eight foot tall rhinoceros <laughs> like in your face, and it's like, we need that girl for Law and Order UK. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, I, this is a fantastic time to open up for questions. Um, let's see, I think I can. Let me get you. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Hey. Hello. Hello. So what do you think about the uh, Weeping Angels? What was I think about the Weeping Angels? Yeah, yeah um, they're kind of... Freaky? They're kind of creepy, right? I mean, again, I've probably I've told this story before, and forgive me if you've heard it, but the, the first time we got the scripts for that, obviously it's the episode that is Companion and Dr. Light, and there's one of those in every season. Um, just because of the filming restraints, you, there actually wasn't time because the Doctor and the Companion appear in pretty much every scene of every um, episode, there really was time constraints. There was always one where you were not in very much. So I, I, I got the script, but I prioritised the one that we were shooting before and right. afterwards, because I've got more lines to learn in those ones. So I, I left reading that one until quite late, and I just looked at my few scenes. And we were doing a night shoot, and we thought, well, that's a, a good opportunity to just, you know, it's quiet, it's 3 a.m. I'll just start reading this script at this time of night in the middle of a field in a trailer. Bad idea. Because I was really going, what is this? And then suddenly there was like this on my door as they came to get me to set, and I just screamed. <laughs> and the guy literally was like, what, did I, what happened in there? And I was just reading episode 10. What the hell? <laughs> Rated episodes, isn't it? It really is. It's it, pretty out there, man. It really is. That's the episode I show when I want people to get into Doctor Who. That's really? one of the, the one I use, and I, I just, I just love it. That that little part with you in it is where you're just like, he needs to get a job. He needs to work. He needs to work. <laughs> get a real job. <laughs> All right. Next question. Hi. Um, Hello. So I hope it's okay to ask this. As uh, a loved uh, companion. You know, I loved you as Martha, and I was super stoked when I saw you in Sensei. And I'm wondering how the Whovian universe has um, adapted to that. Have you gotten a good response? Yes, um, I really have. I'm, I'm so touched with the response to Sensei, actually. I, I admittedly, it's a very different one. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, no, it's, it's a very different role. And I, when, I, when I first got the script for that, actually, I mean, you can, as an actor, spend a lot of time thinking about your audience and how the roles you take on are going to be perceived and received and, um, you know, and, and all of that. And then, fundamentally, you've got to just strip it all back and think, am I going to enjoy playing this part? Can I do this part justice? Because if you're enjoying it, it will permeate through and, and hopefully your audience will enjoy it as well. And so, um, yeah, it was a real, I was, I was terrified at first. Um, you know, it, it's, it, I've never done sex or nudity scenes before and I was a bit like, and I really wanted to, actually I've never played a character who'd been in a love relationship ever in all my career. I was thinking back and so I was actually nervous about playing the honesty of love and getting that across. Especially in a gay relationship, which is so underrepresented on mainstream television, it's a crime. Um, so I was like, I really want to make sure I can do the part justice. Um, and, and as I say, I'm, my soul is warmed at, at how responsive and positive people have been. It's so. a fantastic performance. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 plan, I plan to see that. Yeah, on, uh, Netflix when I get home. I didn't get a chance to see it. That's yeah. right. Not a prerequisite. <laughs> to be in the room. Okay. Yeah. I have an interesting question, I hope. Um, what is the worst Christmas gift you have ever been given, and how did you react? Oh <laughs> and if you God. want to share who gave it to you, that's okay too, but I won't, you know. Uh -oh. The worst Christmas present. My son came up with the question. So that's so oh, that's great. Well, that's, the half. <laughs> that's I've never been asked that one before. Um, so, okay, well, on the top, off the top of my head, generally I, I love anything I receive. <laughs> I'm so excited about Christmas. I, I've never been able to get that out of my system. I get, I put my decorations up at the beginning, beginning of November. I've done my Christmas shopping, you know, in September. I, as soon as the carols start in the shops, I love all of that. So I'm probably so giddy and a bit drunk on Christmas morning when I'm opening my presents that I love everything. <laughs> um, but one year we did a, a £10 Christmas where, you know, you, so you had to stick with the budget and you couldn't, you know, because everyone was getting so fixated and all the gadgets and every you know just gets out of control the amount you're buying for people so um, we did this 10, 10 pound Christmas so we all got gifts uh, um, that were kind of interesting um, it, it, it all descended into arguments really because what we did it what, what we didn't clarify was if you spend 10 pounds on a person but there's a cup there's a they're in a couple I thought it would be okay to spend eight pounds on one, like oh. pounds on it, but apparently that's cheating. Oh, you goofed. I you, messed up. You goofed, Freema. I, I goofed big time. <laughs> so, so, but you know, so, so I'm sorry that I, I can't think of anything specific, but, um, but you know, if, if he wants to it's, get me a gift, <laughs> there you go. I'd love that too. Yeah, All right, So now he'll know what not to send you. That's no, you can send me anything I love. <laughs> I love. Well, we got out of this panel and send Freema gifts. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you. Yes, a gentleman with an excellent bow tie. Hello. I'd like to say bow ties are cool for some reason. Yes. <laughs> Would you compare yourself to Martha? Oh, um, well, I like, I, I feel like when you're playing a part, it's kind of more important to um, find some kind of connection to the character. I don't think it has to necessarily be find, um, identify with the character because that's how actors can play like serial killers and things like that. <laughs> Not necessarily nice people. You know, you don't have to feel like you emulate that or, or embody that. But, but to find a key and a connection that, that you can unlock them and work with them. So, um, I, there are similarities. I, I like that she's a family orientated person. I very much am. Um, um, she's very independent. Uh, some things were very not similar at all. I would, if, I don't wear my heart on my sleeve that much. So if I like somebody, if I fancy somebody, they're probably the last person in the world <laughs> to know. I mean, I'm, I've been with my fiance now 
um, we've been together for like six years and I met him 13 years ago and it took me a really long time to tell him. <laughs> so in some ways we're very different um, and in some ways there's some similarities. Excellent, excellent question. Thank you very much. Star Trek right now. Oh, honey, please. I'm shaking in my boots right now. Um, this is more of a thank you because I remember an episode, the episode Human Nature and Family of Blood, where the doctor has to lock himself in a fog watch and you're kind of running the show. And I love the fierceness that you brought to Martha. And especially the part where her intelligence is being questioned because she's a person of color and she's a maid. And you're like, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that really meant a lot to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but do you know what? It's I'm I'm always really mindful. I mean, as a as an actress, I've been given good opportunities as a black female in the parts that I have um, had the fortune and good opportunity to have. But as a viewer, I still watch television, and there is there is still not a balance in, you know, black, minority, ethnic, or LGBTQ, or actors with disabilities, or, you know, there's still a big imbalance in mainstream television. Um, and so I, I'm always very mindful of looking at not just representation, but portrayal as well. And I think it's not enough, there's still a lot of tokenism going on. And, and you know, that's why it was important for me to play the part in Sensei as well, because I just feel like, you know, to play a, a black, cisgendered, queer character, you know, uh, and be a, be a mouthpiece for that community. I've got, you just think it, there's people so close to all of us in our lives that are still dealing with struggle for acceptance in today's society, still, you know, because of what you look like or who you love or whatever. So it's always, I've always got one eye on that. I like to, you know, parts to speak to me and to to hopefully have a message as well. So I'm glad you, you got some. Thank you. wondering um, if you could cross over Doctor Who with any other show, uh, what would it be and why? <laughs> cross it over with any other show. Um, <laughs> gosh, do you, what would you do? <laughs> Have you thought about this? <laughs> I think Sherlock. Ooh. Oh. on a job and he's adorable, he's so funny and so sweet kind, so that's a perfect answer because I'd love to work with him again actually. <laughs> Thank you for your question. So, um, Tortured is coming back in the form of audio plays. Is there any way we might possibly see Martha return? There's, do you know, there's always a possibility in the world of Who. I was, even if, I was going to say as much a character doesn't die, but even if it, your character does, you know, this <laughs> is the world of sci-fi and fantasy, so you, there's always that. And I feel like that's kind of a nice thing about the show. You can visit and revisit and it, time isn't linear and you can... It's wibbly wobbly. It's wibbly -wobbly. <laughs> yeah, I said I had to. I had to. Go ahead, Martha Jones. <laughs> Yes, I don't know. Yes, no, maybe. I mean, it was talking. But to you would be open to it if it. Yes, I, know. I I feel like Martha definitely needs some resolution, so yeah. it would be great for her to get that in some capacity. So, you know, uh, maybe. Well, yeah, we'll see. I would be open. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. You okay. <laughs> um, she kind of took the question. <laughs> Uh, I had this sort of separate question, I guess, but um, uh, I just recently heard that uh, Julie and uh, Janet from Doctor Who, the producers, are actually making their own production company and they're naming it Bad Wolf, so uh, yeah. yay. Yes. But, um, I was wondering if you had heard about that and if you would ever plan on um, you know, working with them or anything like that. Um, well, uh, yeah, I had heard that they'd done that actually, um, and they they worked so well together. It was such a great team, I think. Um, 
you know, when it was Russell T. Davis and Phil Collinson and Jane Tranter and mm -hmm. uh, Julie Gardner, they all got such a kick out of each other um, that I think that really kind of informed the work. So they, 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 do, they do good stuff when they're working together. So, I mean, yeah, again, it's, it's a similar answer to, to the, the latest question before. It's, as long as the parts are, are right, that there, there's something you enjoy and they, you know, you feel that you could all work together, then there's always possibilities. It's kind of a small, the more you work in this business as well, you kind of realise how small it can be. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody, and yeah, there's quite a bit of that going on. So, which is, which is no bad thing, but um, I suppose it, that can be quite frustrating for people trying to get into the business, because you find that it's the same groups that are being used and reused, and you know, so... So yeah, we'll see. I wish them all the, the best of luck. So. Thank you. Hello, Hi. Um, one day I'd really like to be an actor, and I admire you as an actress and entertainer. So I'd like to know, um, what would you like? What would be your advice for someone who wants to, you know, be an actor as a career? Mm. Yes, um, I would say it, it can be quite a tough job insofar as you know the statistics are there's five percent of actors working at any one time um, I found it personally it, it's two things really firstly when I first when I started out I joined a cooperative agency which in the UK um, is basically a group of actors that get together and represent each other so none of us had agents we became each other's agents. So we went to the space and you know you have all this office equipment and one day a week you go in and you play an agent to 18 other actors. So you call people up in the industry, you cold call them, you say, do you have are you looking for anything this week in your show? And some of them quite are quite amused by the audacity. <laughs> so they go, um, okay sure they're looking for a five foot four blonde woman. I have one of those. I'll just send you her stuff. And then you call them up and go, I just pitched you for something. I got um, my first telly job through working in a co-op, so they do work, but I will say get experience of the industry, get knowledge of the industry is what I'm saying, whether they have co-ops here. But you know, know who's who, know who's directing what, who's producing what, who's casting what, so you get a bit of a knowledge about what direction you kind of want to move into as well. Um, and also don't sit and wait for the phone to ring because it do have something else that you enjoy doing, you know, you can keep working on your craft, you can do, you can make small films, you can do amateur productions with your friends, you can still, you know, be exercising your muscles, but have something else that you do as well, because it, you're in for the long game. <laughs> I mean, it will. It, it, I'm not saying it won't happen for you next year. It might, but it, it's the kind of then there might be another six months in between and another two years in between that. And it's a it's an interesting one. And you know the whole saying about get a thick skin. Rejection is is pretty high up there. It, it's just all the things that you you hear about. It. But but then having said all that, which sounds pretty damn negative, um, <laughs> do it and don't give up. And it's so much fun when you are doing it, it's the best job and, it's, and it brings so much joy to people as well. I, I did used to think, why are actors treated and paid so, you know, so, so much higher than a nurse, say? What, what, how, where is the logic in that? Um, I still think the NHS is pretty good, but it's a whole long discussion. But, you know, it, it's, and someone says to me, but it's the, the escapism, it, that that nurse needs to come home and do something to forget about the, the horror of her day, maybe, or how hard sort of, something had been for her, and, and then she put Tilly on. So, not to be undervalued, you know, but um, you, you just do it, chase it, go for it, but just um, but be, be ready. Be ready. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you could be any other doctor's companion, which doctor would you want to be your doctor? Max Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go right on with that, so I feel like you know, he would have been way high up there. Um, no, I just met Matt like a few months ago for the first time, and I was like, 
I so would have loved to have with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not instead of David, 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 but you know, he, he's just so much fun and I really liked his take on it as well. Actually, I haven't said that, I really like Chris as well, Christopher. Christopher yeah. Eccleston. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I were those two. Yeah, and it was before Rose, so Martha might have had a chance. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying this <laughs> Thank you, thank you thank for your question. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, before my question, I just want to say you were one of my favorite companions. I just loved how you just pulled the doctor away from his depression with Rose and how everything happened. But um, I just wanted to ask you, um, out of all the supporting characters that, um, in your time in, as Martha, that you came across, which one was your favorite, and which one did you think was the most interesting and complex character? Ooh. See, now this is like a memory test. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eight years ago, honey. <laughs> um, my God, uh, I think. Um, see, one of the amazing things about being on that show as well is every week it felt like it was a different. You're, you're in a, working in a different genre. You know, that it could be complete slapstick madness. You had actors coming in with super high intense energy and it was all wacky and manic and oh! <laughs> it's like being on torture with set. <laughs> and then other times it'd have a lot more of a somber nature to it and, um, you know, real thesps were coming in and it was all very serious and everyone was doing their turn. Um, so it kind of really offered something different every time. I really, as a person, I suppose, and as a character, I liked her as well. I really got on well with a Miranda Raisin, who was uh, in the Manhattan, um, Daleks in New York. She was the, the oh. showgirl. Tallulah. Yes. Yeah. Tallulah yeah. showgirl. Dawn. Yeah. Dawn. But yeah, it was... I really loved her and um, I got a kick out of that character. Um, oh, um, I liked... Um, Nurse Red, Jessica Rain's part in um, Family of Blood and Human Nature. I love. Do you know? I can. I, there's, oh, and Adjura, who played my mom in it. <laughs> she, you know, we we kept in. We are still in touch now, but for the longest time afterwards, we would meet up every week and go to the theatre and go for dinner. So you, what, what's amazing about the business world? You you can make friends and form wonderful friendships as well as. You know, it's a bonus if you get to go to your job and you love it, let alone meeting lots of new, new people all the time. So, too many to pick. So, for the rambling answer, do you have a favourite? Um, you, myself? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question is, uh, why and say, you know, I Martha happens to be my favorite companion, and I just want to say, like, I love the intensity and the great independence that uh, you brought to the character, and I just want to say thank you for giving us such an amazing character to look up to. I'm very glad to meet you. What was your favorite episode? My favorite episode? Um, the Shakespeare code. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just loved everything about it. I loved the story, I loved the set design, the costumes, I loved the era. I loved that we shot in the globe. It was um, it was just it was a nice uh, I'd never you know, we were sat on we'd rented the space so we were able to run around there at oh, night wow. and cool. sit on the stage and uh, it just felt the real privilege to be there. So, cool. Yeah, I would say the associations and the kind of um, the, 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 product, the, the finished product of that show, that episode is my favorite. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say as well, I was uh, I was uh, nervous about moderating this. I'm a big Doctor Who fan, but I just literally put on Netflix, you know, a few days just to refresh, and that was the episode that popped up. Really? And I was like, I was like, I was like, I love the Harry Potter reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, I'm like, and I was like, uh, I was just like, uh, watching it. It was just a really great, uh, a really great chance to see, you know, that was your, like, I think that was an episode where you were like the most frustrated. Like you could play that frustrated because when he basically said, yeah, Rose would know, yeah. and you were like, you basically did that harumph and then just turned around like this. Yeah, yeah, no, it was good, and it was funny because with that whole storyline, it was that was kind of funny and fun at mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, so you know, and then a guy gets eaten by a bunch of. You know, alien birds. 
at the very beginning, at the very beginning where he's like. No, no, no. I mean the. Oh, oh no. I mean the that, the rose. The... Oh, that part. Okay. I was like, I was like, a guy died in the first like yeah, five yeah. minutes. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Her right, right. Candle and a half. Absolutely. But yeah, no, it was kind of that was established from the beginning. That kind of unrequited thing, and it did kind of. But I mean, it was kind of funny and amusing. I like that scene. Yeah. That, but it did go on a little bit. It did. It really did. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hi. Um, my question is, um, if you got the chance to work on any other TV show, what TV show would you choose? Um, I'd love to have like a voiceover in Family Guy. <laughs> The Simpson. I love that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, no. So yeah, that one. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Why do you know people? Can you call people? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hello, love. If you were the doctor and you could choose anyone to travel with, who'd you choose? Oh God, these are oh, these on the spot questions. The they're really questions. they're great questions, but I can never think of anything. David. Um, like living, dead, and like. Doesn't matter. You Which are the doctor. <laughs> Who would I choose to travel with? Um. You can pick yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing narcissistic about that. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Um, oh God, I don't like. You know, I want to say something. But it's just. Answer because you're not going to know who I mean. Because there's this game show in the UK, and I think the host is brilliant, and he's called Paddy McGuinness, and he makes me laugh. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I suppose someone who's funny. Funny's got to be high up there. What about you? Who would you? Uh, I don't know. Good, see? <laughs> Wondering if you could be any other person in Doctor Who, who would you choose? Wow. <laughs> um, any other person, another character, yeah. if I could have played it or be them every day of my life. Play them. Play them. Play them the wrong um, uh, oh boy. Well, only because we just mentioned the, the Shakespeare code. Mm. I really like um, uh, Christina Cole's character, the, the Carrionite. Okay. The young one. I really like uh, the, that part, the, the sort of theatrical that was, and um, iambic pentameter delivery and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know Shakespearean. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. I should try and go and do some Shakespeare or something. <laughs> it's speaking to me. Um, so sorry. That's it. That's all. <laughs> and that justifies why you thought that the guy getting shredded apart by the Carrionites is hilarious. <laughs> it makes sense, people. Nice it makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the nice question. Thank you, Christian. Hi. Hello. Love. Um, I wanted to pick your brain about Sensei. Um, I wanted to know what was either your favorite or your funniest memory or your fondest memory of Sensei. Oh my god, like all of it, every single minute. But um, I would probably say, I'm not name dropping, it's just awful to say, but um, I, the Wachowskis have been my heroes for ever since The Matrix. That film totally changed my life. Um, and so, just getting the opportunity to meet them, I was utterly starstruck. I, I mean, if it had just ended there, I would have been life, you know, lifelong achievement achieved. Mm. Um, so um, I really want that was just an amazing experience, and then to work with them and to now consider them friends has been like it's like an absolute dream come true. So everything. I mean, they were so kind to us as well, and they were so. They're so interesting, but they're also so interested in people. And so when you're working with them, they they really want to know what you think, and they really want to know what you've got to say, and they're really excited that you're there. They have parties in their house, they invite us to go, and you're allowed, like they literally gave us a tour of their house, and there's like, here's the memorabilia room with all the Matrix stuff in it, and the Cloud Atlas stuff, and I was actually like, and then there was someone in the toilet downstairs one day when we were there, and I was like, oh, um, I was just went inside. They were like, "Oh, do you need the toilet?" I said, "Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna make sure." There's another one, like uh, two floors up, or whatever. And I was thinking, "Are you just gonna let me go walking around your house on my own? Like, do you trust? Do you trust me? Do you trust us?" But they're so open house, and I just, and just, it's been so significant for me to meet them 
as, as, as my heroes, but also significant in my career, I think, that this part has been really good for me to play. Um, and so, so, so that, that whole, the whole association and what I gained from it was massive. Um, and and, and the, the way they work is so organic as well. So things were changing on the day all the time. So it was just, it just felt so easy and full of love, not to sound, you know, hippy dippy. Hippy -dippy. No, but, no. Um, so, so, so it, the whole thing, the whole thing was an intense and incredible experience. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. It's too tall for me. I feel you. Oh, thank um, you. Lefty Lucy, right? Yep. It won't move. Okay, well, just, just look up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so going back to your favorite episode, the Shakespeare Code, um, with the Harry Potter reference, um, are you or any of the other cast members are big Harry Potter fans? I don't know what it is, sure. Go on. Yes, no, well, um, personally, myself, I haven't read the books. But, um, oh. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this conference is over. <laughs> I have one. And do you know what? And I can tell, I can be deadly honest with you, you're all going to probably, like, completely, you know, shun me now when I say, but it's. Uh -huh. We, as actors, you know, you're part of a product and then you kind of move on and you then are part of another product, another product, and that kind of encompasses your whole world. And, and I don't watch an awful lot of television, so you're probably going to shoot me down when I also say I haven't seen Doctor Who for like the last four years. It's, this conference is over. It's over. It's over. Have, enjoy the rest of the I've seen odd episodes, like I've seen an episode with Matt, or I've seen, right. I've watched the 50th, or, you know, like yeah, the pivotal things. You think, oh my god, I've got to be, I want to be in part of this big thing mm. with everybody else. Um, but but you guys know so much more about it. You know, you, you te you're teaching me things all the time every time I come to these events. I'm like, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, it's kind of, I, I guess I don't have enough hobbies. I need to read more. I'm going to start with Harry. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for your question. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. How does it feel to have this whole crowd of people just here for you? Aww. Aww. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my god. Um, if ever I Took, took it for granted, which I don't, that would humble me straight back into, into realising how lucky um, I am and we are as actors to be working in, in the industry with such gracious and, and wonderful um, fans and excited people to have around us, uh, you know, in association with our work. So I never take it for granted, um, but that moment is always is going to be burnt into my head. Thank you Thank for your you. question. Keep on being adorable. <laughs> Hello, Martha. Hello. All right. One, I think there's an angel back there. Yeah. yeah there's well, a an angel right there, folks. Yeah. Someone Keep staring, staring at it. Yeah. And my question, I ask everyone this. Uh, how would you say Martha starts her morning? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy. What day? How uh, does she spend the day on an off day? In the TARDIS? <laughs> you know from Doctor Who. <laughs> Let's show you what you that one time. Um, she's probably a serial kind of girl. Um, <laughs> she probably hasn't got much time. She's going to the hospital, so it's quick. Um, probably sugar based. <laughs> no, 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 no. Something healthy because she's, she's into her body. Um, and and um, she's practical, so you know, she probably oh, lives boy. quite close to where she works. Oh, boy. I don't know. It's such a, that's such a question. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you keep going. I, I just, like, if I could come up with things like that, I would write. I wouldn't wait for people to like write parts and me just go and audition for them. I'd write my own. <laughs> Thank you for trying. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he got you, oh, he got you good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, next question. We have five.
five more minutes. Oh my god. Okay. I'll answer quickly. Yes. If I can't answer, I can just say pass and then. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Uh, my first thing was you were the first man I ever watched. I was. I watched it on BBC America. I was waiting for Top Gear to come on. I was like, huh, what's, Top to, what's Doctor Who? And first thing came on, Smith and Jones. Oh. So ever since then, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Yes! <laughs> and my other question is, what was it like to work on uh, Shakespeare Code? What was it like? Yes. Um, it was, it was a, lo a, lot, a lot of fun. Although I do remember one overriding memory at the time. Um, I, so I, the outfit I was, I was talking to some guys about this at the autograph table actually. I was wearing heels for, for much of it because of my height and because of David's height and because, you know, when you want to be shot in a two shot, it, you were usually just getting top of my head or you know, off his chin. So we needed to, I was often standing on apple boxes and things like that. So, but we needed to have me in these heels. So I remember at the time we were shooting the Shakespeare Code, as with so many of the episodes, there is an awful lot of running. And I had these heels on. Um, and I, was, I had a really bad toothache at the time that we were shooting. That's so why I was taking quite strong painkillers for the toothache. So I didn't realise I was giving myself shin splints by running in the heels because I couldn't feel the pain. And it was only when I stopped taking the painkillers that I went to take a step one day when I got up and the shooting pains were going up through my legs. So I had to go and get one of these gait tests. I don't know if you've ever had one where there's like an electromagnetic sheet on the floor and you, or whatever it is, and you walk and it can map how you, um, how you, your foot falls and how you're walking. Because the correct way, you don't know, you're supposed to kind of roll on the foot kick off the second toe. Not very many people do that because we all have different postures right. and the rest of it. So I, my feet are quite, they roll outwards. So which is why I was getting these shin splints. I had to get these special insoles made and put in my shoes in these high heels so that I could run in them a little bit more comfortably. So, and, and where we were shooting, there was a lot of cobblestoned pavements because it was an oldie worldy part of, of England. So going over on those stones and occupational hazard. It really was. But it was, it was so, you know, it was all fixed. And it, it's actually got me thinking about things like that in the long term and how your body is your, you know, your, your instrument in, in the acting world and it's your calling card to take more care of it and all the rest of that. So, so it was all fun, fun, fun right up until I gave myself shoes of this. <laughs> My memory of Shakespeare. I was going to ask, like, that was your favourite part? <laughs> Um, now, what's your favorite part? Pain. Yeah. <laughs> There's a thin line between. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your question. I'm afraid that's uh, up for all of our time. Um, so I wish we could have gotten through more, but I think we got through enough. But um, I guess on a on a closing uh, note, uh, for anyone, I think one of the uh, one of the key things people said is that you know you were the companion for you know not only just uh, the tenth Doctor, but you uh, played a part in the Doctor Who universe, and that is a absolute huge deal for everyone. Everyone, thank you. Um, you guys have got awesome, best fans. And uh, uh, Sarima, do you have any, uh, any final parting words before we, uh, before we call this a, a day? Um, if any of you have any books you recommend I ought to go and start reading, <laughs> tell me when we get outside to the table. And give her gifts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>